All right, folks, and this chapter here, chapter 10. And chapter 10 deals with circles and everything we can would want to do to a circle. Um, first of all, some terminology. A lot of terms of things we can do with circles with regards to lines and rays and segments. So I'll start, start it off with you first. Um, first, may have a circle and it'll have a, you know, a center right in the middle of it. And it'll always be a letter there, a capital letter for that point. Call that A. So this now becomes, the name of the circle is Circle A. It's got an eyeball staring at you. Circle A. Now, from that center, we can add some other things. For instance, we can have a, a radius. It starts from the center and goes to any point on the circle. So it begins as a center and goes to any place on the circle. It's beginning, beginning and end, it's a segment. Right, so I'll get rid of a couple of those. You only need one. The other thing you may have would be perhaps a, a diameter. It begins on the circle, goes through the center, and goes back to the circle on the other side. That's a diameter. Of course, there that's made of two radiuses as well. Its length is twice the radius, since it is two radiuses. Okay. The other thing you will have is a um, let's try some colors here. A uh, thing called a cord is a segment that begins in the circle and ends somewhere else inside the circle like that. It could be, must be inside in two points on the circle. In fact, the diameter is also a chord. It begins in, on the circle, ends on the circle, and stays inside the circle. That's called a chord. Called a chord. Uh, the next one is called a tangent. It's outside the circle. It comes along. It's a line or a segment or array. It touches at one point. Just one point here, and let's call it a tangent. It could be a tangent anywhere around here. They could be any place around the circle, okay? Doesn't matter where. Okay. Uh, next thing we could have is a, a secant. Yeah. Uh, so that's what it's called, a secant. So this thing is a line that goes through the circle and keeps on going. So it starts out here, the upper right-hand corner, and can zoom right on through. It's a line. It goes on forever and ever, right on through the circle at two places. It doesn't stop. It keeps on going. Remember, a chord will begin and end on the circle. And I think that's about all you need to be dangerous. So let's look at some of the problems down below. Number one here. To so tell whether the line, ray, or segment is best described as a radius, a chord, a diameter, a secant, or a tangent. I think I covered all those. So AC, again, uh, AC begins and ends. It's a segment. Make sure, you, make sure you notice, please. You know, a segment there, and it's a line. Uh, certain things can be lines, and certain things can be segments. But sometimes you can't interchange those, so just be careful. All right, so AC, let me highlight it for you. It goes from the center to the, radi to the, <laughs> to the uh, circle. That's clearly a radius. Radius. Okay. Next one, letter B is AB. It's a segment, begins and ends. And again, it's right here. And it goes through the center, so it's gonna be a diameter. It's a diameter. In my spelling, in my handwriting. <clears throat> uh, let's see what else we got here. We also have DE. It is a ray, DE. So it starts here. Okay, whoops, let me go backwards here. It starts here and goes this direction, like that. And it touches the circle at one point. So that will be a tangent. Tangent. And maybe some of you are thinking, hey man, we did tangents back with the uh, with the trig functions. And maybe you didn't because you you were this, it was the homeschooling stuff. Maybe you don't remember all those things. But we did them. Okay, uh, next thing they want is AE the line. AE. So here me highlight it for you. Here's AE. It, begin, it doesn't begin or end. It goes on forever and ever through the circle at two places. That is a secant. Secant. So we're going to have you, you know, get to know some of those terms. All right. Now, uh, diameter is not so bad. Let's go to what they call coplanar circles. Two circles can intersect in two points. Two circles can intersect at one point or at no points. I'm, again, I'm reading from right here. They can intersect with two points. One point or no points. Coplanar circles that intersect at one point are called tangent circles. 
Cold planar circles can have com common sense that are called concentric. So let me show you what concentric looks like. Concentric, that's this word here, you have two circles that share a center. It could be three circles that are concentric, kind of like a bullseye. Okay. Um, now we can have points of intersection. So there's two points of intersection. So let me drill these for you. Um, so you have circles like this that overlap, and you have these two points of intersection, right? They both you know, meet at the two points. For one point of intersection, you have a circle here, and the circle, the circle can be right there, and they meet at that one point there. Now that's one way to do it. The other way is this, there's actually two ways. Draw, um, I don't leave all these on here for you. A circle, and then another one inside that touches at one point. They meet right here, comes like an olive, okay? And then no points of intersection. Generally you have the concentric, they don't meet, and these two of course don't meet. So at least now you have an idea how they can, two circles can interact. They can't interact in any other ways. Those are it, those five ways. Two, one, or no uh, intersections. Now, what can we do with these intersections or lack of intersections? On the next page, it says common tangents. A line array of something that is tangent to two coplanar circles is called a common tangent. Yeah, you can have, again, let me show you what a tangent in case you forget. You have a circle, and this line comes along the outside, and it touches at one point, bunk, right there. Touch that one point. That's a tangent line. Well, when you have two circles, you have all kinds of ways they can interact. So, uh, example three. How many, how many common tangents circles have and draw them? Um, I'm going to start with the easiest one and work them up to more difficult. Remember, the tangent line never goes inside the circle. So if you're looking at letter C, you may be thinking, well, I can draw a line like this. Well, no, it cuts inside the two circles, doesn't it? So that's not going to fly. You could draw a line like this to be a common tangent to the one circle, but it's cutting through the second circle on the right, so that's not a common tangent. Here's what a common tangent is on the, on the C drawing here. I'll zoom in for you so you can see better. <clears throat> a common tangent will touch here and there and keep going. And do you see any other ones? There's one down here also. So for a circle that has the two points of intersection, there's two common tangents. Okay. On this one, on letter B, kind of like a snowman, you have the same you just did. You have the one on top and bottom, right? One, here's two. And get, can you see the third one? I missed, I know. It should be up here. But can you see the third one? It comes down like this. That's the third common tangent. It's touching each circle at one point right there. Again, I apologize for this one. And on the last one, there's a whole bunch for this. Hopefully you see the first two again. You know, above, you know, below, above. And can you see what's going on in between? You have one like this. Touching another point. You know, I missed, but you get the idea. And come along with this. You have four. There's four ways. Four common tangents. All right, so let's go down. You know, that's, you can draw these quick. Um, for four, they're common. Well, if you look at that, it, it looks like letter C from above. So you're going to have the one below. Again, I'm quick in there. And this is very slippery to write on. There's two. For number five there, right, they, these two circles meet right here at one point, And you can have one line going right through there. And for six, uh, yeah, you don't. Because if you try to draw one for the inner circle, a tangent, see how it splits the other, or actually goes inside the other circle? So there's none there. There's zero. So here you got two, here you got one, here you got zero. Okay? All right, some other things we're going to look at. I'm going to have you guys practice some drawing here. We're on the A paper, uh, numbers 13 to 17. <clears throat> it says, use circle P to draw the part of the circle described or answer the question. So what you do is you go through each of these steps on numbers 13 to 17. You draw this, then you draw that, and then you just draw these in order. As you're drawing, if you, if you put a point A on your picture, that's it, one point A, you can't put another one someplace else. If you need a point A again later on, you've got to use that same point A. So for instance, let me show you where those are at here, for instance, on this. If you look at numbers 13, 14, 15, they have a B here, they got a B here, and they got a B there. Well, that point B has to be the same point B that you put on that drawing. So I suggest that you do these problems, you do them in order, and they're not that tough then. So it says draw a diameter AB. All right, so you have to label it too. So the diameter goes through the center like this, 
here's A, here's B. There's my diameter dots there as well. That's my number 15. I'll put a little check mark. I'm doing that. Did it. Looks good, right? Draw a tangent line CB. CB. Now look, there's B. I have to use the same B. And here is my B. I've got to use the same B. Okay. So it's a line CB. So I'm just going to draw a line like this. It's a line. I need to put a, put a C someplace. I'll put my C there. There you go. And there's your line CB. Check. Next one says draw chord DB again. The B's highlighted there. You gotta use that same B. A chord is inside the circle. It begins and ends inside the circle. I can go above or below that diameter of AB. Let's go above for the heck of it. I'll go right here. Here's my D. My B's already there. That's my chord. Check. Now they're saying draw a secant through A. And hey, again, um, hopefully you see A, which is over here. Here's A. And we're gonna draw a secant through that. Doesn't matter where it goes, but I'm gonna go right, I'm gonna use point C like this. Boom, the secant A, there's line AC, which is a secant, because right through the circle. Got that done. And it says, what is the name of the radius in the figure? Well, you have two names, don't you? You have PB as a segment, or you have PA as a segment. All right, so you're gonna have other, other problems like this. We have to draw.